schizophrenia, a serious mental disorder in which people interpret reality abnormally. Schizophrenia may result in some combination of hallucinations, delusions, and extremely disordered thinking and behavior. Do you believe your own thoughts? Can you trust yourself to make the right decisions when the time comes? Are you sure that what you're about to do is real? Are you sure that any of this is real? Those questions may sound ridiculous to some of you, because why wouldn't you trust your mind? However, for some people it's not that simple. Imagine walking into the kitchen to grab a snack, and then your best friend who came over asks you to grab them one as well, which you obviously do. You hand it to them, you physically feel your hand graze theirs, and then you head back to the kitchen because you forgot to pour yourself a drink. When you're done, you pass by where your best friend was sitting, however they're no longer there, and the snack that you handed them is lying in their place. Schizophrenia one of the most terrifying mental illnesses you can have because you can never trust yourself. What you see may or may not be there. What you heard may not have ever happened, and the place you think you're at may not even exist. It's hard to understand the scope of this disease if you don't have it or if you've never been around someone who has it, but it's one of the worst mental diseases you can have. Medication can help, but sometimes it's too severe. Sometimes your mind is too far gone. The example I just gave you about imagining your best friend not actually being in your house is a relatively tame case. But what does an extreme scenario look like? What does it look like inside the mind of someone whose voices in their head have convinced them that the world is against them, that everyone is hiding something from them? Well, I think the best way for you, the viewer, to understand what I mean would be by seeing the world through the eyes of someone who has this terrible disease. Someone who is a genuine psychopath. Or, in this case, a psychopomp. Our main character is a young girl whose name is never stated to us. However, for this video, we'll call her Pom Pom. When we meet Pom Pom, she has just finished the construction of a helmet that she created that would let her read the minds of other people, which she named Psychopomp. The helmet didn't work, unfortunately, but it did something else for her instead. It shows her the truth. It showed her the secrets that everyone has been hiding from her her whole life. It tells her about the tunnels that are underneath every public government building. It tells her about the dead bodies and nightmares that lie within those catacombs. Pom Pom doesn't stand for it though, and she decides to make things right. Why would the helmet lie to her? The helmet is her only friend. Everyone else looks at her like she's crazy, like she's making it up, but the voices are telling her the truth, and she has to fix this. So, she goes into her first government building, bringing along a hammer to protect her, but not before she runs into someone. Another young girl, though she seems to be having a breakdown. Her hair is nice and soft, and though she thinks about tasting it, she refrains from doing so. To Pom Pom, this girl shouldn't have to suffer. She shouldn't have to be stuck here, crying, feeling bad for herself. So, Pom Pom decides it's best to help her out and bash her into a pulp with her hammer. There. Now she can be free from this cruel world. The voices tell her that what she is doing is right. Anyway, Pom Pom heads into her first building, a sewage plant. Chemicals being added to chemicals for human consumption. Yum. Pom Pom eventually finds the elevator and heads down into the catacombs. The helmet was right, there were tunnels underneath the building. She knew the helmet wouldn't lie to her like everyone else did. When the elevator opens, she steps out and explores the catacombs, coming across strange creatures that the helmet lets her see. A threat person, a kawaii stock, and some other bad, bad monsters that she pounds into a pulp when they try to hurt her. To Pom Pom, they're real, and they would hurt her if she let them. While exploring, Pom Pom comes across a note that she wrote, though it's not clear how the note even got there in the first place. 
The note says that she feels like she just woke up for the first time and that her previous memories are all kind of hazy. But she's awake now. She can't stop smiling. To us though, the player, the message behind this note is clear. The note refers to the day that Pom Pom stopped taking her schizophrenia medication and how its effects have worn off. This note completely explains the behavior that she is experiencing now and why it seems that she has gone off the rails. The medication isn't suppressing her disease anymore. The voices were able to roam free and take over her mind, making her truly believe that there are tunnels underneath government buildings and that there are sewage creatures. In reality, there are not. After reading the note and unlocking a few doors, Pom Pom comes across a large sewage creature that has a kawaii face called the Queen. Hanging above the Queen's head is a guillotine, ready to drop at a moment's notice. The Queen doesn't seem to be bothered by this, she actually seems excited about it. Pom Pom finds the creatures to be disgusting, so she doesn't mind executing her. After all, these creatures feed on human waste and chemicals. They are disgusting. They are rotten beasts who don't deserve to breathe the same air as her, and that is why she pounds them into a pulp with her hammer. She searches around for the leather, which is on the other side of the catacomb, and pulls it. When she returns to the queen, her head is chopped off, and a weird worm embryo called the Egg of the Earth lies in front of her. Pom Pom's job here is complete. She grabs the egg and leaves the sewage plant. And then she moves on to the next government building, the hospital. The place where doctors give you diseases so they can take your coin and use your body to benefit the VIP. When she descends into the catacombs here, her beliefs are immediately proven true. The nurses inform her that they keep their VIP patients alive by harvesting the weaker patients, and this in turn keeps the elite immortal. It's disgusting. The voices in Pom Pom's head tells her what she needs to do, and there is almost no fight. Pom Pom pounds the nurses into a pulp and executes each VIP member until they are all dead. There. The world is now a little bit safer, a little bit better, and it's all thanks to her helmet, because the helmet is her friend and tells her the truth and helps her see the world for what it truly is. She's not crazy. No, not crazy. Once all the VIP members are dead, Pom Pom collects the next egg of the earth. Without skipping a beat, she moves on to the third government building, which is a school. Pom Pom seems to be familiar with this place, particularly with the cold area where she says the teachers locked up the loud kids. She would rather not think about that. She descends down into the tunnels beneath the school and discovers a factory. But not just any factory. A factory that preys upon children and uses them until they no longer serve a purpose, which they are then turned into slag for things like butter knives. It sickens Pom Pom what is happening here. The head of production, and I mean the literal head of production, seems off though. When Pom Pom arrives, he asks her to please kill him. Well, she was going to anyway, but it feels a bit better to her knowing that this monster wants to die. Pom Pom will gladly escort him to the afterlife. She pulpifies the workers that stand in her way, turning off the safeguards and doing as he asked, kills the head of production. Pom Pom has no problem killing these people. They're immoral, despicable beings. She is glad to be a psychopomp, as the literal definition of the word psychopomp is guiding souls to the place of the dead. That is her. That is Pom Pom. A guide for those to the land of the dead. How glorifying. The helmet must be proud of her. She collects the third and final egg of the earth, she is now ready for her journey. Her journey to the center of the earth. It was finally happening. She didn't tell anyone because they wouldn't have believed in her. They would have called her crazy. But not the helmet, no. She told the helmet because the helmet believes in her. Anywho, she falls down, down, down. 
She passes by a Mariana Trench because there is a Mariana Trench under every town. She falls until she reaches the center of the earth. At last, she reaches her reward, the life meat of the world able to be crafted from ash and clay into whatever being she desired. Her own baby to take care of, she takes her baby and leaves. How sweet. To you, the viewer, what you may have just watched might have sounded like a bad acid trip to you. However, this is reality. This is what schizophrenia can do to someone if provoked. But this video isn't only a mental disorder analysis, it's a game analysis, which means that there is an explanation for what just happened in this game. It wasn't just schizophrenia, and what do I mean by that? Well, though never directly stated, none of this would have happened without the helmet, of course. The helmet told her to do this. The helmet told her, the girl with schizophrenia and an already weak and broken mind, to go into government buildings and kill people. The helmet was the voices in her head. The helmet wasn't just made by her, it was a gift. A gift from the government. A gift from the CIA, a, a gift of gift, a gift. God, how do I make them understand? No, no, you, you don't get it, okay? That's just not how it works, okay? Look, I know, I know you think it's that easy, but it's not. Look, okay, look, listen. They get it. They're smart. They don't need... A billion words to understand what I mean, okay? I don't need to write a billion words to explain that the game is supposed to show what it's like if you are a person with schizophrenia is an antagonized by an a by a third party. Okay, now leave me alone, all right? I have, I have there. There's a deadline that you told me to. Y yes, Saturday, okay? Look, maybe Sunday, okay? I don't remember. But leave me alone, please. Please. Schizophrenia may result in some combination of hallucinations, delusions, and extremely disordered thinking and behavior. Hi, yeah, fourth wall break here. I just want to clarify some things really quickly before y'all scream at me in the comments. First off, yes, I made my voice sound unstable on purpose to match the atmosphere that I wanted for this video. Second off, yes, any skit, quote unquote, that was in this video was just bad acting. I'm okay in real life. Last off, this video was meant to show what it looks like for someone to have a severe case of schizophrenia while also being manipulated by a third party. That's why I didn't really talk about the lore of this game, because it's not what this video was meant for, and because the lore of this game is just... complicated. I'm not MatPat. Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip side.